Welcome to Electron Online. Now that we know mutual inductance and self-inductance, let's try and see if we can figure out the self-inductance of a solenoid in this video. Well, here's a solenoid. It's basically a tube that has a wire coiled around it. We send a current through the wire and using a right-hand rule, if we point our fingers in the direction of the current, you see the current goes behind and over and in front of the tube like this. Our thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field and so the magnetic field will go from left to right like this. If the the solenoid is long compared to its diameter, you can pretty well assume that the, that the magnetic field or that the flux through the tube is pretty well uniform all the way through. It does have some edge effects, but if it's a long skinny tube, which typically we have for coils, you can almost imagine a uniform magnetic field throughout the tube. And the definition of the flux through the tube would then be equal to the magnetic field strength times the cross-sectional area of the tube. And remember, the magnetic field for a solenoid is equal to mu sub naught times the number of loops per, per unit length times the current through the loop. Now, of course, the number of loops per unit length, we can write that as mu sub naught times the total number of loops divided by the length of the solenoid times the current I. And finally, the definition of self-inductance, basically, is equal to the number of loops times the ratio of the flux going through the loops divided by the current that drives the flux through the loop. So it's a ratio of how much flux per unit uh, current times the number of loops that we have, which is a self-inductance. So now what we have to do is kind of combine those together. So here we can say that the self-inductance is equal to the number of loops times the change in the flux, the magnetic flux divided by the current. And then, of course, the flux is B times A, so this cannot be written as the number of loops times B times A divided by the current. And finally, B can then be defined by what we have over there. So this is equal to N times B. B is going to be mu sub naught times N divided by L times I. So that would be B, the magnetic field, times the cross-sectional area divided by the current. Notice in this case, the current cancels out. So the self-inductance of a solenoid does not depend on the current. And then we can multiply n times n. So finally, we can say that the self-inductance of a solenoid is equal to mu sub naught times uh, the number of loops squared times the cross-sectional area and all divided by the length. Ooh, now, just so that we don't have the same l's in there, what I probably should do is turn the big L into a small L so that we don't have the same variable. So let's just define the length of the, of the uh, solenoid by the small L, L like that, so we don't get the two confused. And there we go. That's the self-inductance of a solenoid. 